going to start um, adding our Friday session back on the help desk next week. So if you were trained in the help desk, we would love your help. Um, also, the plant sale will be going online this year. We're going to have online orders with the plant pickups on April 2nd. They're at the Georgetown Community Center. So be sure to mark your calendar. There will be lots of opportunities to volunteer on April 1st and 2nd. And then um, I'm sure Tommy will let us know what other help he needs as we get ready for the plant sale. So I'm excited to have it. We're going to have everything in gallon pots this year. Our our team is working on the plant list already, and it should be really good. Um, so uh, with those announcements, I'm going to um, announce Rick Halley is our speaker today. And he's going to be talking about the strawberry trials that we started in the fall of 2019. It's hard to believe it's been that long ago, Rick, <laughs> that this started. Uh, we were just starting to get strawberries to harvest when COVID hit. And so Rick's going to kind of walk us through the strawberry trials and the information that we were able to get from those. So, Rick, are you able to unmute your microphone? Yeah, I've got it on mute, so now I hit share. Oh, hit share. If you have questions during this, if you'll put them in the chat, and then I'll save them until the end. Uh, ask Rick all the questions all at once. Okay, Rick, we can see your presentation. Oh, wow. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Strawberry Trial Interrupted as... Uh, as Kate said, it went from October 19 until June 2020. So you know what the interruption was. And uh, I'm a, a uh, Williamson County uh, Master Gardener. And when I, in normal times, I love to spend a lot of time at the uh, uh, demo gardens on the Southeast Loop, Southeast side of, of Georgetown. So uh, it's on the southeast loop, south of 29, and uh, north of uh, Way Kelly, uh, Way Hill Road. And uh, so it's right by the Road and Bridge building. You see that here? And uh, this is the, the demo garden that uh, this trial took place in. And a lot of, a lot of interesting uh, Things have been experimented with over the over the years, and uh, so we encourage you to come out and, and visit and see what we're doing now. So, at a uh, a planning meeting with the the vegetable committee in the summer of 2019, we uh, we chose to conduct a strawberry trial, and. Uh, we researched, uh, you know, what varieties we should grow, the requirements, where to get plants, and I've got uh, references at the uh, at the end of the presentation to uh, cover all of that. So uh, hopefully we, we can uh, get you lined up with uh, strawberries next year. So we allocated space in three different uh, garden beds, uh, 65 foot long. A regular raised uh, garden bed. It was uh, it's about three feet wide, and we planted uh, two rows of strawberries uh, down that entire row, and then we broke it into two blocks of three different varieties, and uh, that ended up. Just keep going. And then uh, trial bed C is is uh, in the middle here. And uh, it's 30 feet long and four feet wide. And uh, we planted three rows of strawberries in that. And then uh, in uh, row 10, which is uh, a shorter row, just 20 feet and uh, five feet wide. And we planted uh, three rows of strawberries there. And I, again, it broke it into uh, by the three different varieties into uh, into blocks. All these beds uh, were prepared the same way, and uh, all had the the same previous crop. In them. So they were uh, consistent, but the soil is is a little different in each one of them. Let's 
So what is a strawberry? A strawberry is a small evergreen plant in the, in the rose family. They have uh, trilobe leaves and uh, very shallow fibrous roots that grow off of a thick woody crown. Uh, they originally were cultivated in France. There were wild strawberries in America and Chile, and uh, they've been um, crossed in various ways to develop tolerance to pests and pathogens. So there's uh, three different varieties of strawberry plants that, that came out of all of that. There's uh, what's called a spring bearing, short day, June, of uh, strawberry, and they produce just one crop in a, in a focused uh, uh, window. And uh, they're, in Texas, they're planted in the fall, and they produce berries in the spring and, and then start to make runners as it warms up. Another variety is the ever-bearing, long-day varieties, which uh, would produce a crop all through summer if you lived in the Midwest. But when it gets to be 90 degrees here, they suffer badly and uh, they're just not as suitable for here. So if you order a strawberry from Michigan or somewhere like that, watch what kind of variety it is. You, you want a short day or the third is a, a day neutral. Uh, and they produce runners and flowers. I don't care what what the, the day length is, but again, they're affected by temperatures and will shut down when the temperatures get too hot. So these are the three varieties that we picked. And these uh, glowing descriptions are, are the uh, uh, verbiage from uh, the company that we uh, bought them from at Lawson Canyon uh, in California. So we bought uh, 300 strawberry uh, bare root plants. We ended up planting 269 in, in the trial. We had planned on putting maybe four rows in, in uh, row 10, but it looked too crowded, so we, we backed off a little bit. The extras went into other beds, and uh, and fortuitously, we needed some of those later on. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so, Albion, Camarosa, and Chandler. Uh, Chandler's probably the one that uh, when you buy strawberries at uh, HEB in in the summer, if they're raised in Texas, it's probably a Chandler. So the bread preparation that we did was uh, the previous crop was, was southern peas in all three beds. We uh, cut the tops off and chopped them up, put them in the compost, and left the roots behind, hoping that the, uh, the nitrogen nodules that were set on the roots would, would contribute to the bed after, uh, after it broke down some. Our standard amendments to uh, all of our beds in the demonstration garden are compost, cotton seed meal, and molasses. And in these uh, beds, we also added uh, MicroLife 64, about four pounds per 100 square feet, and NCAP fast acting sulfur to try to get the, the pH of the bed down. Um, our soil test was seven and a half to eight on the pH. And strawberries prefer a little lower pH than that, six and a half to seven, seven and a half is okay. So we uh, just lightly broad forked to open up the subsoil some. Some of our soil is pretty heavy. Um, and then the amendments were just hoed into the surface then, not, uh, not turned over or deeply dug. We ran our, our drip irrigation lines watered it all in and waited for our strawberries to arrive. And in the meantime, we had the, uh, the help of this, this young man who, uh, who Sonia's daughter is friends with, and he had a pine plantation over by uh, Bryan College Station, his family does, 
we gathered up uh, an SUV and a pickup load of uh, pine straw and brought it back to the uh, to the garden to take care of uh, mulching over the over the top of the strawberry. So the, the strawberry plants arrived then in, in October on the seventh. Well, they, they came early in that week. They uh, usually ship early in the week so that uh, so that they don't end up stuck in the post office over the weekend. And uh, so we we got them on a Wednesday or a Thursday and and uh, planted them on Friday. It's uh, it's important that you keep the plants bare root plants cool and uh, get them in the ground as, as fast as you can. So they come in, uh, came from Lawson Canyon, it came in bags of 100. So this is uh, Chandler. You see it's pretty, uh, pretty scruffy looking little plant here. And uh, we soaked them to uh, kind of hydrate those roots a little bit and some CT for 15 minutes. We had this highly uh, highly technical dibble set up where we could measure out uh, the spacing to keep them about a feet apart. A foot apart. This is uh, uh, row eight, so it's uh, three three rows. This is uh, the trial bed C. So then you we, after you've marked the spots, we dug them out to uh, a space big enough to accommodate the roots after they've been spread out. And uh, we put uh, some water in there, obviously, and uh, and some uh, earthworm castings just to, to uh, give them the blessing of, of Betty Jo that we have have the proper uh, send off for the plants. So very carefully uh, set them in those holes in. This is uh, the chant, the uh, Albions, a little more uh, robust looking plant uh, that came on a later date. So here's the uh, Albions uh, in the end of, of row 10. And uh, you can see the, the leaves are just uh, starting to emerge from this uh, scruffy looking uh, stalk that the, that the leaves sit on top of. Strawberries are picky. You want to baby them as much as you can. They want a, a moist but well-drained soil. They want uh, the pH to be six to seven and a half. And uh, we struggle with that and our water is alkaline too. So we had to make some, uh, some amendments later on to uh, counter that. So here's the, the diagram, not too deep, not too shallow. Just set it right at the, the base of that stock. They're heavy feeders, so we gave them the microlife, lots of compost, lots of compost in that in those beds. And they don't want any of the plant to uh, touch bare ground because uh, they're very prone to, to mildew. So here's... Uh, Trial bed C, this is the Albion plants. And uh, here's Kate. Kate and I putting down uh, pine straw on uh, probably some of the Chandler and Camarosa there. So when we planted the, uh, the Albions, and this is the same, same week, already there were two, two sets of leaves on the, uh, on the Chandlers that we planted the Friday before. They move along pretty fast. So here's just a little bit later, you can see the green popping up through the, the pine straw. And uh, just a few few leaves then, that's only a, a, a week after, after planting. And here's the, and a month later, so there's uh, five sets of leaves. Now November 12th uh, was our first frost. And so uh, we rushed out there, well, mostly Jim, Jim and Judy rushed out there and covered them all with, uh, with freeze cloth. And then Jim came up with a low, low tuttle design. 
and uh, here on the 26th, he's, he's getting that in, in place. So uh, after this, uh, this time, they were protected in, in uh, this mini greenhouse of, uh, of uh, a low tone. So here's uh, early in December, and we start getting some flowers. They look really, really happy in this uh, low tunnel. You can see some gaps here. And, and we had a big problem with the Albion plants. And I assume this was just a fluke of the batch we got. But the, uh, the tops started dying back. And uh, when it was dead, you pull it up, and the roots are black. They are supposed to be white. And you cut open the, the, uh, the stalk, and it's red inside. And again, that should be white. So it's, it's possible this is uh, uh, a fungus disease that came with the plants. There are plants right next to them that, that did fine, lived through the entire trial. And the ones that didn't just uh, cratered all at once in, uh, in December. So there's a few references at the end trying to understand what uh, what happened here. But essentially, we just pulled them out, threw them away, and uh, and went on with uh, with the trial with what we had left. So here we are in January. Nice, vigorous looking looking plants. This is trial bed C. We did have some problems. Uh, Pill bugs or snails chewed on some, so we gave uh, gave them a a dose of Sluggo Plus. There's lots of hiding places down underneath that pine straw. the uh, The Chandlers had a more of an issue with iron chlorosis, um, and Jim gave them a, a shot of iron chelate. We probably did that uh, every week or a couple weeks. Um, and it stayed, you know, it never totally went away, but it stayed pretty well in control. We took off the flowers uh, as the plants were, were growing to, uh, to help the plant grow to uh, its maximum size and strength uh, before we started taking berries off of it. Here in February, you can see uh, they're trying to make berries. We were plucking plucking these off. Uh, there's a few uh, few sticks in here, and uh, so these were places where a plant was was lost for some reason or other. Just didn't didn't prosper, and uh, some of those extra plants they went to uh, uh, other gardens or other places. Uh, we brought back in an infield. And so when you see the uh, charts, when we get down into the really nerdy part, uh, you'll see that some, some numbers climb back up again, and that's because we brought, brought back some plants from elsewhere. So we started uh, harvesting a few berries in March. Um, had to add bird netting because the mockingbird was also finding strawberries. And here's, here's the mold problem. If, if a berry uh, sits on a wet spot, uh, you get this nasty mold. So you pick this beautiful berry that's on the upside, the sunny side, and then you turn it over and it's nasty gray. Gray mold is there. The best thing to do is, is keep that uh, pine straw mulch or whatever mulch you use thick and keep the, keep the berries up uh, out, of, out of trouble. All right, so we're to the the nerdier part of the of the presentation here. So this is the data that we uh, attempted to to gather. So this is just like the front little bit of it. So for each each garden row and each variety at each date, we noted how many plants there were. So here, see in row eight, originally we planted thirty eight. Uh, Camarosa, we ended up adding two more uh, 
when we had to get back some. Uh, Chandler's lost one, gained one. Albion lost a bunch of them. And then in March, we started uh, picking some berries. And uh, you can see trial bed C. Uh, we, we picked the first, the first few berries uh, from that uh, garden bed. And that's probably because uh, Jim put the first low tunnel on it. So they were a little more sheltered and a little uh, warmer through November and December and produced a little bit earlier berries. And then pretty much everybody uh, kicked in through through March. Um, Albion might have been a little slower. And uh, you can start seeing some some gaps here. So there's uh, the, the 8th of April and then no more harvest until uh, the 19th of, of April. And that's uh, that's about when the, uh, the full impact of, of the uh, lockdown occurred and in the county judge asked uh, you know minimal number of people to to be in the garden and uh, so we were hitting the, the highest stride of uh, of our strawberry production and the workforce was much diminished and we have to give a, a lot of credit to the to the few people who did uh, did stay and uh, and harvested a lot of these berries to to get this data and uh, I was not one of them I, I stayed home but you can see uh, there's a lot of berries in some of these days this is this is May and uh, one one harvest in May and here's uh, here's how many Camarosa this is how many Chandler and this is how many Albion and you can kind of see you know, Chan Camarosa produces the most, Chandler produces well. Uh, Albion produces fewer, but some of the berries are bigger. And we uh, kind of empirically thought that the Albion berries tasted better. And especially as you got into, into May and June, um, the berries, all of them, tasted better than they did early on. But here's the whole the whole chart, all the data we were able to correct. Here's that 10-day uh, gap in, in April. But then in May, there was a 36, around May, there was a 36-day gap. So we lost a lot, of, a lot of data. But we can learn something from, from what we did gather. So to be able to see this, we broke it down into uh, row by row. And uh, so in, in row eight, got stuff all over some of this. There we go. Um, there was 113 plants through uh, April, April on, on through. And uh, we picked uh, 1,090 berries. Thank you, brave pickers, through that time. That was about 30 pounds of berries. And uh, but it's only about four, four point two ounces per per plant for this whole row. So you you, you can kind of figure uh, if you want to if you want to get a few pounds of berries to make the strawberry pies or something, you're going to have to have quite a few plants. And to, so to get down to the nuts and bolts of it, there were thirty nine camarosas that survived in. Uh, uh, row eight, they produced 16 berries that we counted. How many the uh, mockingbird got? How many just rotted? You know, there would have been more had we been there every day to to pick uh, pick berries, and it uh, averaged out to 5.2 ounces per plant. And there's kind of a, a I think a strange phenomenon here. Uh, so these last four rows uh, document the, the number of berries, 
We see June, a tremendous number of berries, but the average weight decreased pretty dramatically. And uh, the only answer I can conjure up is that uh, early on we were we were adding, we were supplementing uh, uh, fish emulsion and molasses to, to between the plants, not pouring it on the plants, but putting it on the, the bed around them. And uh, we stopped doing that in, uh, in early April. And so the plants were just using up the energy they had. And uh, that, that probably could have changed had we uh, uh, had a more continuous fertilization program. And uh, Albion didn't decrease as much as as the other two, the berries stayed stayed bigger, but got fewer berries per plant. Even averaged out over you know a fewer fewer plants. So for trial bed C, which is the one who had the low tunnel on at first, there weren't as many plants, 67. Still a tremendous number of berries, 26 pounds of berries, and it averaged more uh, weight per plant, six. 6.2 ounces, not a lot more, but more. And uh, got more more berries per uh, per plant uh, from Camarosa, and uh, and the most uh, weight per plant. And uh, you know a lot of a lot of berries, especially in the in the in June and, and recognizing that we lost most of May. I imagine May look, could have looked a lot like June. And again, the, the berry size decreased in this bed also, uh, except for Albion. Albion stayed nominally, the, the berry size stayed the same. And then in row 10, and the plants in row 10 were probably the most vigorous plants. I mean, it was, it was just a, a jungle in there by the time uh, we got to May and June. But it was uh, fewer plants, quite a few, uh, quite a few berries per plant, though, especially for Camarosa. So 50 plants, 667 berries, 16 pounds. So that was 20, 20 by 5 feet. And uh, that's a pretty, uh, pretty decent uh, strawberry patch. And the, uh, the size of the berries uh, for Camarosa was good, but pretty, pretty lousy for Albion. And some, some of these were ones that we had to uh, bring back. Uh, I think five, five of these 15 were actually plants that we brought back from somewhere else, so they didn't get quite the... Uh, length of time in, in the garden. So here's the, the June 7th harvest. That's uh, 4.8 pounds of berries. Chandler, uh, you know, has some really nice berries in it. Camarosa has a lot of berries. And even Albion was uh, doing really well in that harvest. So we didn't have a, a true trial because uh, of the interruptions and the difficulty of, uh, of having uh, minimal uh, people being required to do all the, the work to harvest. And you know, it's, it's uh, labor intensive to record the data. It wouldn't be that labor intensive just to pick them and eat them. But but to record all this data was, was labor intensive. I'd say that all three of these varieties produced well, but Camarosa produced more and probably would be the winner. Uh, general consensus was Albion produced the best tasting berries. The May and June berries tasted better than the earlier berries. The average berry size was larger in March and April, smaller in May and June, and that, that is just a quandary to me. June was the most productive month, but we lost a lot of the May, May data. 
and uh, trial bed C had a slightly heavier harvest per plant, um, but it lost a lot of its albion plants, a lot of over half of the berry plants in, in uh, trial bed C died. But the, I think the, the low tunnel being in place early really helped the strawberry production in, in that bed. Chandler had more issues with uh, iron chlorosis, um, but giving it some iron chelate, it still, it still produced berries well. You don't have to eat the leaves, so just eat the berries. That was fine. And the thick, uh, loose mulch of pine straw helped the, the berries stay up off the ground, out of the dirt. So this is uh, the references. And uh, this is where we bought our plants. If you don't want 300 plants, and they are a commercial nursery, and they may not um, be that interested in, in supplying fewer of them. Uh, but uh, Bob Wells is a nursery in, in East Texas. They had Camarosa and Albion. And uh, uh, Texas uh, tasted Tested Seeds is a, is a website um, that also has Camarosa and Albion. And uh, Bob Wells has multiple different varieties that uh, uh, obviously do, do well somewhere in Texas. Uh, Texas Tasted, I think, is near, is west of Dallas somewhere. And uh, notice that uh, both uh, McIntyre's and uh, Round Rock in and probably other nurseries too had uh, plants in the fall in uh, little four inch pots. Um, you know, we paid about 70 cents, probably less than 70 cents a plant for, uh, for our uh, strawberries. And you pay, you know, maybe a couple bucks, a dollar fifty or a couple bucks per plant. Uh, from, from these other sites, and probably uh, two and a half or so for uh, plants at the nursery in, in, uh, in four inch pots. But if you only need 20 plants, that's definitely the way to go. There are a couple uh, local you pick options uh, Sweet Eats Fruit Farm, west of or east of Georgetown uh, on 29. Um, John put in a bunch of strawberries last year. I assume he'll put some in this year. I haven't talked to him. Um, so you can you can go out there and, and pick berries. A sweet berry farm in, in Marble Falls was uh, they had on their Facebook page that they were already had har had harvested some berries in uh, in January, which is pretty phenomenal. I'm, I'm not sure they may leave their berries in the ground all year. I haven't talked to them to know. There's uh, some really interesting uh, references here. Uh, the uh, production guide for Texas strawberries, you can see my picture there, it's 39 pages. It's like the Bible of, of, uh, of Texas uh, strawberry growing by various uh, A&M authors. And uh, you can download that. Uh, PDF at that extension, and uh, and look through it yourself. They recommend a lot of varieties, a lot of uh, uh, information on on best practices, and and it's orientated toward commercial growers. But but uh, uh, there's lots lots to learn. You can also go to uh, TexasGardener.com uh, to this uh, this link. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Dr. Larry Stein put an article in there about strawberries. Again, it's kind of orientated toward commercial growers, but it's, but it's interesting. And here's a couple of uh, references to places that have information on, on uh, strawberry diseases. And, and uh, hopefully you won't uh, need any of any of those but that's uh that's there if you need it and again here's uh the bucolic uh 
beautiful vegetable demonstration garden that uh, the trial took place in, and, and uh, you can uh, come see what's what's going on now. I'll put this back on the on the references here, where anybody wants to uh, copy any of this down, we can. I think that's uh, that's we can go to questions, Kate. If we're ready for that. Okay, Rick. I hope you're ready for all these questions. <laughs> I have references here. Okay, we got some good ones coming in today. Um, well, and I'll just say thanks to Rick and all the the team who worked on this. It was it it was a lot of fun for me, you know, planting and harvesting some of that. Uh, got in some good squats. It's good exercise. I highly recommend strawberries if you need to work your thigh muscles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay, let's get into the question. So uh, we had one come in. What is CT? Uh, CT is a product of Gardenville. So it's uh, fish emulsion and uh, seaweed, a uh, liquid. And so you, you put uh, a couple ounces of that in a gallon or two of water. And uh, it has trace minerals, it has nitrogen. And uh, it's just a, a very uh, mellow uh, organic fertilizer uh, soil feeding liquid that uh, that helps uh, helps the biology and, and helps the plants around the biology. Yep, it's a two three two ratio, so that's good good little fertilizer. Um, Okay, let's see. Our, uh, well, we had one comment on, on how nerdy this is, but they really loved it. So <laughs> good data in there. Um, and then one about the, the taste test. Uh, which one you liked? We liked Albion, but I think they, they all got better in the warmer weather. Mm -hmm. So it's like the first... Uh, the first berries were were really tart and uh, not much sweetness to them. And then uh, as it got warmer, uh, they got better. And uh, I liked Albion the best, but I wouldn't throw any of them back. So they're all they're all good. Good. Uh, we had a question about the straw for mulch. And Sonia, are you still on that? She sourced that and had some Aggies help collect good pine straw mulch from College Station. Yeah, private source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My grandma lives in Canton, though. If anybody needs some more, we can make arrangements. <laughs> East Texas is good for we'll that. Rent, we'll rent a trailer next time and bring back a lot. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, next question was, when did you stop taking off flowers and green berries and let the fruit set for harvest? And then how long from flower to ripe fruit? They, um, we stopped at the end of February. So I'm not sure what, you know, what the last work day in February was, but March 3rd, we had berries that we picked. So it's, it was almost instantaneous. It, you know, that was part of the, uh, uh, the difficulty in, of, uh, of this was, you know, we work two days a week and you could have picked strawberries every other day. And in fact, we did, we did go down on Sunday a lot of times and, and, uh, and go pick berries because uh, it doesn't take them long. Once, once you get a nice warm day, they, uh, they ripen very quickly. Mm -hmm. That kind of leads into our next question. How do you know when a berry is ready? And the strawberries are interesting because they're, they ripen on the vine, um, but once you pick them, they don't ripen anymore. So you want to wait till you have a nice red ripe strawberry, um, yeah. then it's ready to harvest. Yeah, I, I defaulted to totally red. I'd even pick it up and look at the bottom. If the bottom was white, I'd leave it. Mm -hmm. Of course. The mockingbird was not so picky, so it, it's a race. <laughs> yep, it is. Uh, we had a question on how do you store saved seeds? How, what was that? 
how do you so store saved seeds? I don't know if that's in reference to strawberry seeds or just in general. Oh, store and save seeds. Yeah. I, they're, strawberries are mostly uh, not grown from seed. And, and uh, so they're all kind of clones. Uh, when it warms up, strawberries will send out runners. And so what, uh, what the growers do is they let those runners root and then they cut them off from the main plant. And, uh, and when it's strong enough, then they can harvest it and sell it as bare root or, or you can put it in a pot. You know, um, for, for us to, to keep them over the summer, I've, I've tried. And they struggle. It's it's terrible. You'd have to keep them in the shade or something. You know, I put shade cloth over some in my garden, and uh, you know I didn't get much the next year. So so you're better off just to, to buy uh, buy plants each fall and uh, and and start again. Mm -hmm. Rick, I think that may have. Partially answered, the next question is, how long will a strawberry plant live? Yeah. And that's if you're in, a lot on where you are and <laughs> how hot it is. In Kansas <laughs> or North Dakota, years. If you're in Texas until about June. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were, they were cratering uh, when we pulled them out at the end of June. Yep, hard to get them through that summer heat. Yeah. Uh, we had a question, do you grow strawberries at home? I tried. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have enough sunshine, I don't think, or, or enough garden space. I'm working on that, trying to get more garden space. But uh, I've, I've tried a couple times, and uh, I learned so much from this, I'd certainly do it differently. And uh, I probably will try again, maybe in the fall. Great. Okay. Let's see. We may have a few more. Uh, can you grow them in pots to keep them off the ground and away from pill bugs? I believe you could. I believe you could. You'd have to keep them well watered and everything. But, um, um, you know, I, I think that might be a, as long as you have a big enough pot so that that plant gets plenty of nutrition. I wouldn't crowd them too much, but I believe you could raise them in pots. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the commercial strawberry growers will grow them in the like coconut core in greenhouses. Uh, they'll basically a pot. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it actually might benefit you a little bit because you can control the pH of your soil. So yeah. Maybe yeah, you could you could adapt the pH better, and you could uh, you know use rainwater if you mm -hmm. weren't watering a whole bed. You could use rainwater or something that was less alkaline. Yep. Yeah. Just takes a lot of pots to get a whole strawberry pie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, better to go to one of these you picket places up here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, uh, Sweet Eats, John uh, Meredith over at. Sweet Eats, he does have some strawberries on plastic right now. Um, I was out there a week or two ago, and so they'll have strawberries this year. Uh, one last question. Could you put a store-bought strawberry right in the ground to develop a plant? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I think that would be pretty tough. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, here's a good one. I just inherited some strawberry jars. Are they practical? I'm I'm guessing the you know those planters that have the little side holes, things for holes strawberries. All around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's difficulty keeping all of them wet. You know, it's like if you pour the water in the top. And the ones around the bottom never see that water. You know, if, 
I think it would be more difficult than just a, you know, a few plants in a pot rear. You get uh, water straight to them. Yep. They're very cute pots, but maybe not the most practical. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's all the questions. Well, we had one um, asking where this information will be. So we'll put the recording on the Master Gardener website. Um, we've got a list of all of our videos. And I think, Rick, if you don't mind sharing um, some of the documents that you've put, we can probably put those as a PDF online as well. Okay. Um, so we can get all that online. Be sure to, it, it takes me a couple days to get everything edited and put up uh, over to Gary Bowman to get online, but we'll have that available soon. Um, Lots of thank yous coming in, Rick, for a great presentation. And I, I do appreciate the team that did the strawberry trial. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy getting to see strawberries planted in the fall and then taken all the way through spring and in harvest. So it was a big good. team. I get yes. to do this, but it was a big team that, that did all this. It was a great team out in the garden. So. Thanks everybody for being on tonight. Thanks Rick for a great presentation. Um, remember mark your calendars for the plant sale. April 2nd will be pickup day and then the orders are online March 25th and 26th. So you don't wanna miss that. Um, we're getting a lot more volunteer opportunities on the VMS calendar. So be sure to check it out and see if uh, there's a place you might be interested in plugging in. All right, with that, we'll say good night. Thanks for being here.